One of the fascinating parts of Maimonides is Maimonides compartmentalization of Jewish thought and Jewish principle. Up until Maimonides came along, many people had this image of God that God was this great king who had a perfect body, who had x-ray vision and knew everything you could do intuitively and observed every action of yours but only if you worshipped him. If you didn't worship God, then you were relegated to the forces of nature which took over, which would be harmful and destructive whenever God so felt a need to do so, to remind people that he was in charge. Maimonides came along and began to change all of that. His principles include that God has no body. If God has no body, then God is singular and indivisible. And God is all-knowing and exists beyond time and beyond space. For time and space are also creations of God. These are ideas that were radical. People thought that space and time existed forever. This, these are things that the Greeks believed in. The Greeks believed in a perpetual existence to which the gods only manipulated. And Jewish belief, although different from that, did not differ that radically in terms of how they looked at the world, or at least the simple people, or even the sophisticated people looked at the world. It was Rambam Maimonides who was able to quantify what exactly do we believe. And one of the principles of Maimonides is that you're supposed to believe in the resurrection of the dead. And in fact, the rabbis say, he who does not believe in the resurrection of the dead will not rise at the time of the resurrection. Now that sounds like frightening people into saying you believe in something that doesn't make sense to you. But first let's examine why Maimonides says what he says. A person who does not believe that God is above the physical has an improper understanding of what God is. And because the person has an improper understanding of what God is, once you die, your mind is set. And the purpose of life is to get the world to come. What is the world to come? The world to come is the knowledge that comes from the things that you've understood in this lifetime. You create your base of knowledge from where to expand. If all you know are what the Yankees did last night, or even if all you know is E equals MC squared, and you have no knowledge of God, where will your knowledge base about God and godliness expand from? It's impossible. And therefore, such an intellect, the human being's soul is an intellect, has nowhere to go, because it has no base in the world of godliness. And that's why Maimonides says, a person who believes that God is corporeal has no portion in the world to come. Now, Ravid Ibn David objects to this. How can you say such a person is a heretic and a terrible person? Heretics have a, a rule associated with them. In the olden days, heretics, if they were found in a pit, 
you didn't take them out of the pit. In fact, you try to get them into the pit, let them stay there, because they ruined the lives of Jewish children. And so he objects, wait a second, there are many people who believed improperly, and they were righteous and religious people, better than this man, better than Maimonides himself. Maimonides did not back down. But the point of Ravid has to be understood. There are many well-meaning people that make errors when it comes to God. Why should they be relegated to the realm of the heretic? And the answer that one can understand from Maimonides is that when we die, our mind must expand from the reference points where we left off. And if we have a faulty reference point, how are we going to understand what God is truly all about if we think that God can play baseball just better than we do, that God is nice looking, a lot nicer looking than we are, that God is smart, just a little smarter than we are? How can we begin to understand the wisdom of the Creator when we look at the Creator that way. And that's what Maimonides really is saying. And truly, people who don't believe in the resurrection have a faulty religious system. They think that they understand and know it all. We don't know it all. And we have to accept that there are certain traditions that came from people who had communication with the Creator. And the true meaning of that tradition will be revealed at the time that Messiah will come. A little bit of that we've gotten through the writings of the Ari, and later on the, the Baal Shem Tov and the Baal Shem Tov students, including the Baal Atanya, the author of the Tanya, the founder of Chabad. These great men gave us an inkling as to what the soul truly is all about. And if the soul is so holy, and if the soul is so profound, we can only begin to imagine the profundity, and the grandeur and the greatness of godliness, and ultimately God himself. The reason why people don't believe in a resurrection is because they don't believe that there may be a God at all. Because it's hard conceiving of God starting everything when you're taught evolution. And so they have doubts about that. They believe in their heart of hearts, but they don't believe. They don't know what to believe. And then there are rules in the Torah that make no sense, at least to the common person. And even if they make sense, the person is not ready to accept them because it runs contrary to modern lifestyle, which feels very good. Modern lifestyle gives comfort to people. People have air conditioning. People go and play golf and go on vacations, things that people could not do 200 years ago. And so... The belief in God and the belief in Torah seem to run contrary in this person's mind to what it feels to be good in their physical life. And any reminder that there may be something other than this physical life makes the person uncomfortable. Hence the person says, I don't believe in all of that. In truth, we believe that there is such a thing as immortality course we yearn for it we try for it but we think that immortality comes from the deeds that we do in this life or the memories that we give people that we give our children and grandchildren because when you don't understand what the soul is and you don't understand what God must be like you have an impact proper and imperfect